Hello everybody, welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to make another Discord server banner. This time around, it's going to be a little different than normal in the sense that it's going to be taking images from online and just dropping those in and doing some minor edits. I know I've mentioned that I frown upon that sort of thing in the past, but it's really simple to do and it's quick if you really need something in the moment and it can look pretty decent right away. Now you might eventually want to get some artists to make this for you, make the specific designs and you edit it yourself from there. But this really just works in a general sense. As long as you're doing some editing, that's better than just grabbing an image and uploading it because you're inputting some of your own work in that scenario and not just straight up copy pasting. Okay, so to start out, what you're going to want to do is you want to make a new canvas and I've already had this made here just to speed things up. And this is the size 960 by 540. And this is going to have three different sections. The slide sections are going to mirror each other in the sense it's going to have the same exact design style and the center sections are sort of going to pop out and these side sections are going to be more of the support. So you may have a sense of what I'm talking about, but if you don't, you'll see what I mean in a second. So I like to choose really vibrant colors from my backgrounds and these sorts of scenarios just so I can see if anything is sticking out, anything isn't sized properly, I'll see that bright green, orange, red poking out somewhere. So this will take a second and I'll be back once I get these three sections properly sized out. Okay, so I've gone ahead and sized out the sections. These two are the same exact size on the edges. This one I put a little bit bigger since it is the focus. And as you can see when I was sizing it out, I did make the opacity down to doesn't really matter, but 87 just so I could see where these things would cross. So now that you have everything sized out, you want to go ahead and properly organize the objects so you know exactly where you're working and when, and you want to get the images picked out. So once again, I'll be back once I have that organized and the pictures inside the file. Alright, so I went ahead and organized the files. You can see center, right, left, and the base layers, which is the vibrant colors, base, base, base. You can see I dropped the images in and staying true to the anime Japanese culture theme of the channel, which I do deviate from every now and then. I use characters from My Hero Academia, Bakugo, Midoriya, and All Might. And as you can see, the way I laid it out is the one in the center is facing straight ahead. The one on the left side is facing to the right, which is towards the center character. And the one on the right side is facing to the left, which is again towards the center character. You don't have to organize it like that, but I feel as if it has a better effect than if they were all facing front, towards the front. So once you have that there, you can go ahead and apply the first effect, which is the one that really adds this first pop out feature to the image. So you go to this first base layer, which is in the center section, go to blending options, and you're going to do a drop shadow. And you can kind of see it already before I even started doing anything to it. It makes this center section just pop with the shadow. So let me get this properly sized out a bit and I'll be right back. Alright, so here's what I did. I did say sized out. I'm not sure where that word came from. I meant properly laid out with the numbers over here for opacity and all that such. So this is how I did mine. It doesn't look too prominent just yet because we haven't actually done much to the sides, but once we edit the sides, this drop shadow effect is going to help it pop a fair bit. You could also play around bevels. I'm not, I don't think it'll look that great in this scenario. Let me try it real quick. 
but I'm not expecting a whole lot. I generally only use it when I'm going, when I'm using textures, for example, to make wood. I'd use one of these shapes here. I'll apply a wood texture and I'll use bevels to make it seem more realistic. In this scenario, I probably would, wouldn't use it. We can try it again a bit later and see how it looks. Did I just cancel that? I did. I didn't hit OK. One sec. That's annoying. Alright, that should be fine. Alright, so next part we're going to do is we're going to do these side sections. And it kind of varies how you do it. Sometimes I'm in favor of going to, let me show you, filter, blur gallery, and doing a field blur. And if it was scenery, for example, you had this character here, and on the sides you had, for example, a forest and a lake, or some other scenic view. I'll be all for using a field blur, but I don't think it would look all that great in this scenario. I mean, maybe if we had a really low opacity. Maybe? Question mark? Actually, four might not be too bad, because you can still see the character. But it's not so much so that the... It's distracting. Now, it is a bit of, of a misfortune that the only pictures of Bakugo I could find that were facing to the right had this red background. The vast majority of the pictures of him I could find had this red background, which is bad because red is a color that stands out and catches people's attention. People's attention. Sorry my voice sounds off, by the way. I've been pretty sick for the past several days. Which is also the reason I didn't upload yesterday. I wasn't feeling well enough to record. Let's see, it's bringing us also down to four. Yeah, I kind of like that actually. I wasn't expecting it to work out that well. If it was for scenery, I'd probably go up to six, seven, or eight in terms of the blur. I wouldn't really go any higher because at that point, it just looks like a jumbled color mess, but even at A you can still get some of the outlines and figure out what it is. Alright, next thing I want to do is I'm going to bring in a glass, I don't know what to call it. Is it really called a texture when it's like this? Glass blur, can't think of the name for right now, for whatever reason. Let's try something out. If you're curious, I did not make this beforehand. I was just scrolling through server discovery and I saw a banner made not exactly like this. They just had the pop out in the center. And I figured, hey, I can make a tutorial on that. So I'm not exactly sure how I want this glass to look. Normally I have it on normal and just drop the opacity, but sometimes these blending options here look pretty decent, but I think I might just stay with normal and drop the opacity like I normally do. Bring that over to the other side. Once again, clip that. And what I do want to try is this. This normally looks pretty good in terms of, yeah, I like that already. Inner shadows can look really good if you use them wisely. I mean, look at that difference. 
it's subtle enough so once you add it, it's you don't really think about it, but you notice it, and when you remove it, you just realize, hey, there's something missing. I think I might actually just keep it at that. Copy that. If you're curious, no, I probably wouldn't use a solid banner for my server. Just because we have a mascot and a logo and I like having the text to get written across it. But this would definitely be applicable to a wide variety of servers just because it has characters. You could have it for games, you could have it for animes, movies, TV shows, so many different things that it really is in everything style. Next thing I want to try is adding a grunge. I'm not sure how well this is going to turn out. Considering I normally only use this on the straight up colors to give it a bit more texture. So bear with me while I try this out. Feel free to skip ahead. You don't want to see this part. Don't blame you. Normally I would pause, but... Maybe I should pause while I figure this out. That's kind of cool. Alright, I'm just going to go ahead and pause real quick while I see if this is even going to work. Okay, so I went ahead and applied it. Number I was testing out the pattern which I'll get back to in just a second. So I went ahead and applied those textures. This is the after and this is the before. I think it helps overall just darken the images a bit and once again, as a texture does, add some more texture to the image. So I personally am in favor of them. I will leave them in here in this template when I upload it. So you have it there. But I'll personally leave this sort of thing in. And by the way, I use linear burn with 22% opacity. And that glass texture needs to go back on. Alright, and what I was testing out over here is a pattern overlay. So it kind of depends on you if you think it's going to be too much. I'm sort of indifferent about it. And, when, and for patterns, you just Google pattern, a Photoshop pattern download, and you'll find a whole bunch of patterns that you can grab. So I see 30, 358. Hmm. Probably just could have copied and pasted. Oh well. It's sort of up to you. It could work, it might not work. I'll just leave the patterns on for here. And, by the way, if any of you know how to make my pattern selector bigger, I'd really appreciate it. I don't know why it's so small. I don't know how to make it any bigger. But having a look at all my patterns at this tiny size is such a pain. So please leave a comment if you know how to enlarge this. Because this is very bothersome. So This is basically it for this design here. We didn't really do much to the center, except add that drop shadow. I'm going to remove that drop shadow so you can see what it looks like without it. The pop effect is a lot more noticeable with that drop shadow, as you can see. I can try the bevel again, but I don't think it's going to work all that great. Oh. Not in the slightest. Actually, let me try. It might actually work pretty decently. Wait. I actually kind of like that. I wasn't expecting that to work, but look at that. It actually looks pretty decent. It helps it pop even more. 
I never really play around with shadings or angles. When I use bevels, I mostly use this. But that's kind of cool. I, I figured I'd push a few buttons down here and look at that. So yeah, I'll leave the bevel on here as well so you can try that. I wouldn't use any patterns on here. Don't need it. Yeah. I'll leave most of these effects just to the sides because the center image you choose should already be rather eye-catching. Doesn't really need any more work to it. You could probably try to add some textures or whatever to a center, but I honestly don't think it needs anything if you have the right image. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. It should be up in an hour, just as long as it how long, however long it takes for YouTube to process and for Google Drive to get these files uploaded. Thank you so much for watching, and I promise that next week's video will not be late. I'm all better now, for the most part, and I'll have plenty of time to get that recorded, so it won't be a day late again. Thank you for supporting the channel, and if you do want to see more of these types of videos, you will see another server banner tutorial on screen for a different style that is also applicable to a lot of other servers. See ya!